and then make a couple of announcements. So one, I'm not sure if I mentioned it the last class, but there is this um, extra credit kind of assignment that I had been talking about for a couple of weeks now. Um, it's for that STEM lecture series event that happened on October 14th. And so if for anyone that missed it, they could still complete this quiz and you can still get the 10 bonus points. Now, it is more of like an up to 10 bonus points because in order for you to receive all the 10 bonus points, you do have to receive a 100 on the quiz and you do have three attempts to get to that 100, okay? Um, if it does save your best attempt, right? That'll be the one that it puts in the grade book is your best attempt. And if your best attempt is not 100%, it's to say it's 60%, then you would still receive 60% of those 10 bonus points, which in that case would be six bonus points, okay? So just try, um, and you could even have, once you click on the, the link to the video, you can have the quiz side by side, the video, so that as you hear them talk, you know, and they answer a question, you can kind of go click the answer on your quiz, okay? Um, it doesn't require lockdown browser or anything like that. So um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. Also, I did unlock all, I don't know why this was published in the video. Mm -hmm. um, I did open up all the old homework assignments. So if there's anyone that's wanting to like improve an old homework score, you have until December 2nd to improve old homework scores. Okay, and it goes all the way back to the very beginning. Okay, um, the reviews also, since your test reviews count as part of your grade, right? Um, the reviews also are open. So they still have the same deadlines here but there's no um, like cutoff date. So when you submit it, it'll tell me that you did it late, but it doesn't matter if the score will still be in there, okay? So you can still beef up your review scores and your homework scores, okay? Um, and I think that's pretty much it, it was just those two main um, announcements. So we're going to continue today with sections 9.3 and 9.4. Um, the lessons here, since we did do most of the uh, content, like describing what was going on in these sections in the discussion videos, we're just going to be covering a few examples because there's not very many homework problems on this, these three sections. I think there's like five or six in one section and like maybe seven in the other section. So we're going to hit some of the ones that are different than the ones that we did in the videos. Um, and then that way you have some extra examples to help you get through that assignment. So let me minimize this and pull up my camera. But there's not very many. So it, the likelihood of us finishing early like we did last class is high. <laughs> but it just <laughs> depends on if we have questions and I need to go explain certain things in more depth. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't just you. <laughs> no, it was trying to focus, but let me lock it so that I can Okay, see why I'm right here. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so I I know I've looked at the older posts for the 9.3 and 9.4. So some of the people that might have completed it yesterday, like earlier yesterday, I would have read your posts. But if you completed it a little bit later yesterday or even this morning, I did not see your post. So before I start 9.3, um, did anybody have any questions about what you saw in the videos for that point. <laughs> I mean, we might address everything as well, but okay. So for this section, they're very specific. It's the two tests, the midsection, which are the integral test and the P series test. And before I start doing those, I'd like to pull up my chart. That you'll have in your, um, I'm also going to need this for the integral test, these little formulas. Um, but it's the, what is it called? Series test for convergence. There we go. So you'll get one of these pictures in your review and in your test. Um, there's one that's better than the others. I just don't know.
I'll find it, but it's not on the one, but it should have one that's pretty. Okay, I'm just going to go with this one. So last class, we talked briefly about uh, the test for divergence. So if you take the limit, and that's for notation. Um, they all say that. There it goes. So if you take the uh, limit as n goes to infinity of your, basically the sequence part of the series, the little e thing is the summation. And that's what turns the sequence into a series, right? So you have a list of numbers, but then as soon as you put that sigma in front of it, now you have to add all of those numbers together. And then that's what makes it a series now instead of a sequence. Okay. So if you take the limit of that sequence part, right, without the adding part of them, adding them all together, and you do not get zero, then you know that this, the, the series is going to diverge. Okay. Now, if you do get zero, it doesn't tell you anything. It's literally inconclusive if you do take the limit and you get zero, okay? That just means that it could be convergent, but it could also still be divergent, right? Um, it just depends. So getting zero doesn't tell you whether it converges or not. Go away. Oops, the box go away. Anyway, so that was the divergence test. And normally, if you look at something, you can kind of already see what's going to happen as n goes to infinity. And if you're not going to get zero as n goes to infinity, you probably already just going to say, well, the nth term has said the divergence. Okay? That's usually the quick one that you want to do almost for every problem. Okay? Um, then another one we talked about last class was the geometric series. right? So as long as whatever the base was for the exponential, Regardless of sign, whatever that value is, as long as it's greater than one, it'll diverge. And if it's less than one, then it'll converge. And it even tells you what it'll converge to. Okay? It tells you what that sum would add up to be. So if you were to add up all those numbers, it gives you the answer. Okay? Um, all these other ones don't do that. They don't give you the sum. They just tell you whether or not they converge or diverge. Okay? But even though we know it converges, we won't know what you get when you add up all the terms. Okay, and they won't ask you that really. The only one they ever ask you for that is when you do the geometry series. Today, though, we're going to hit two of them. Today, we're doing P series and then integral test. Actually, we're doing four. It's like four. I'll explain. <laughs> so, P series and integral test was for 9.3. P series basically says if you can get it to one over n with an exponent then you analyze that exponent. If the exponent is bigger than one, then the series will converge. If that exponent is less than one, then the series will diverge, okay? Um, then the integral test says that if you let um, the sequence part of it be a function, right? And then you take the integral of that function from one to infinity. So not necessarily the limit of it, but the integral of it from one to infinity. If this, integral, improper integral converges, right? If you get a finite number, it converges. But if you get an infinity or a negative infinity, then it diverges, okay? Um, then the limit comparison test, there's two comparison tests. There's direct comparison, and then there's limit comparison. So the direct comparison is like, this is Roman numerals, but like one and two. One and two um, are the direct comparison. So you come up with another series to compare to the series that you were given, okay? And then you kind of analyze, like the big one converge or diverge, the little one converge or diverge, whichever one's easier to analyze. And then that helps you make the conclusion about the original one you were given, okay? And we'll get to those today. If that one's not my favorite, just because it's a little confusing, especially when you're thinking about who's the big one, who's the little one, what's my goal? Is my goal to show that the big one converges so the little one does, or is my goal to show that the little one diverges so the big one diverges as well, okay? So the balance why it's not my favorite. <laughs> so I think I mentioned that in the video, like the, the comparison ones are just not my favorite. And I will never use them unless I literally have to, like the direction they I have to, okay? Um, and then the other comparison test is the limit comparison test. 
So you do still come up with a secondary um, series, but instead of trying to figure out which one converges and which one diverges and what it means, you basically just divide one over the other and then you take the limit. And if you get an actual finite number that's bigger than zero, then they either both converge or they both diverge. And then you can just go look at A and B by themselves and see whether or not they converge or diverge. So, and if you don't get a positive number, you get a negative number, then there's not even, you're gonna have to do some other tests, okay? It's just inconclusive at that point. So these, this chapter is gonna be weird because it might not be that the math part of it is complicated, the complicated part in this chapter is going to be knowing which test to apply, applying it correctly, and then following the logic of that test to make your conclusion, okay? And so not only are you going to be writing math on your paper, you're also going to need to be writing sentences on your paper. This tells me this, and that's why this means this, okay? If you don't write those sentences, then there's no way I know that you understand the logic behind what you're doing, okay? You have to make those statements, okay? Especially if it tells you something like this, where it says they both converge or they both diverge, you would say that. You would say, here's my limit. I did all the math. I got this. So this means both converge or both diverge. Then you would do your work to figure out whether which one converges or diverges. And then you would say, since this one diverges, the other one diverges. And you have to write that down, okay? Otherwise, there's no way to know. It's like a proof kind of. I don't know if y'all ever did proofs. But it's not like math, like, you know, here's the problem, give me a number as your answer. Everything you write down is your answer, okay? Um, and it has to be logical. So that, that's what's going to be the challenge in this. We, and there, proofs? pretty much in this one, it, that's pretty much what you're doing is you're, you're applying the test to prove that this thing converges or diverges, mm -hmm. yes. Um, We'll get back to the math part when we get to chapter 10, but this section is very much logic based. Here's some tests you can apply to find out the information you need and then go at it, okay? <laughs> so it's a little bit different than what we've been doing so far. So I, I, and I, I try to stress it, but I'll still get people just applying the test and then just saying converges. And I'm like, what converges? Why does it converge? You have to explain all that, okay? Um, so let's go with the first one. So the first one says to use the integral test. Okay. So in order for me to apply the integral test, I have to first come up with a function. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let f of x equal one over six to the x. So it's this series description, right? or the sequence description, once you put this E in front of it, the whole thing becomes a series. So that by itself is a sequence. The whole thing is a series, okay? And this guy is usually represented by like A N, right? And in the notes, it said to let F of X equal, or F of N equal A N. It said that in the test itself, okay? But when you put it in the integral, they're using the variable x in the test. So I had to change it from f of n to f of x. And so then now that we've defined what f of x is, now I can start using it. Okay. So we want to see what happens when we take this integral. So in my case, that's going to be the integral of 1 over 6 to the power x dx. And I'm going to rewrite that since it is an exponential. It's just six to the negative x. And there is an integral rule that allows me to do that. I don't think that we've done one in class per se, but there is an integral rule that we can apply here to take this integral. We've done x to the negative six, right? But we haven't done six to the negative x. So let me go get the, the integrals. I have it over here. So the one we're trying to look for is number seven. So notice that on number seven, it says the integral of some base base to your variable with 
respect to that same variable is going to end up being this expression. Okay. Now I won't have plus C because I do have um, factors, right? But we also learned in our section that you can't leave that as a bit, right? You have to change it to the limit as my upper bound goes to infinity and then change the upper bound to your leg. So when I do uh, everybody in unison, oh, yeah. I'm actually going to leave this alone for now. I'm not going to write anything else because I don't have all the pieces I need for this problem. Notice that here my variable is not just x, right? It's negative x. So I have to say, let u equal negative x, then du would be negative 1 dx, right? Or negative du would equal dx. So now I can replace the pieces that I have. So the exponent, the negative x, will become u. And the du will become negative, I'm sorry, the dx will become negative du. I'm going to put the du here, but I'm actually going to put the negative outside. And you are taking the limit of this whole thing. It's not like lim minus that, right? It's the limit of the negative integral. I think I might need more paper than I left myself on this thing. So <laughs> taking pictures of this thing would be interesting. Um, so let's apply that rule that they had in the paper. According to that paper, I'm going to get negative. Um, what was it? One over the ln of my base, which is six. And and then six to the u. I don't need to write plus c because I am going to use my bounds one to b. But before I can plug in the one and the b, I have to back up for my u. Okay. So I'm going to have negative one over ln of six. And then I'm going to have six to the power of negative x because that's what u was. And then now we're going to plug in b. And then it would be minus this exact expression, but with one plugged in. So when I minus the whole negative expression, it's going to become plus. And then it'll be six to the negative one power. Now I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to factor out the one over ln of six. And because one over ln of six is just a number, a constant, I'm going to factor it out of the limit. It's just a multiplier. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write this as negative 1 over 6 to the power x. So that negative in the front is going in my numerator. And then this, because it has a negative exponent, is going to the denominator. Looks like I'm taking a little invisible 1 there and putting it at the top. And since that's gone, this one would just be positive 1 over 6 to the 1. Now, as B goes to infinity, what's happening to this denominator? Not the whole fraction, just the denominator. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So then the whole fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually approaching zero. So you essentially end up with one over six ln of six as your final limit. 
And according to that test, I'll go look at it in a second. A lot of writing. It says in a roll test, if the top one converges, then the other one converges, right? And since we click on all the buttons except the one I want. <laughs> so since this is a finite number, right? It is a number, it's not undefined or infinity or negative infinity. This implies that the integral converges. And according to that integral test, that implies that the series converges, which is what we were asked to look for, right? Was the series. So we, this thing only tells me that the integral converges. This, getting that doesn't directly tell me that my original series converges, okay? It's the test that says if the integral converges, then the series converges, okay? And getting this for my integral only tells me that the integral converges. And then that itself means that the series converges, okay? So that's what I mean by like, <laughs> you have to follow the logic. You can't just go straight from what you did, like you applying the test to, oh, it converges. You have to say what that test was telling you and then what that means about your series, okay? So my test told me that if I got a finite number, then my integral converged. And if my integral converged, then my series converged, okay? So you did have to write those two statements at the bottom. So that one will go a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but I'll leave it here in case anyone wants to take when they do the video. They want to take this shot of the whole problem. There we go. So when I take a photo, I'll make sure I do this, and then before I put the other one. Okay. Now the next example is going to be about the P series. And the P-series is a super sweet, easy test to apply. As long as your denominator is just in with some power, okay? And here it is, but it's in disguise, okay? They didn't tell me what a series looked like in this form, right? Like they normally they give the series in this form. But when they give it to you like this with all the plus signs, you have to put it in that series form, in the summation form. And that's why we were talking about summations at the very beginning, right? Remember that? Um, and we even had like a couple problems where they gave you like a big list and then you had to write it in summation form. But this is why, because it happens again later. So um, for this one, I noticed that it does go dot, dot, dot. So I'm, it's safe to assume that it's going to go to infinity. Otherwise, it would have had a plus on the other side of this dot, 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 and it would have told you what the last term was going to be, okay? But if it just had dot, 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 it means it's going to go to infinity. Now, in usually starts at one or zero. I'm going to start at one here, and I can kind of see what's happening. Um, the numerator is always one across the board, but the denominator is actually the fourth root of n cubed. Right, if I do one cubed and then the fourth root of it, it's still one. One over one is this big giant one. But if I do two cubed, I get eight. So fourth root of eight, the denominator. If I do three cubed, I get 27, fourth root of 27, so on and so forth, right? That's four cubed, that's five cubed, et cetera. So this is the pattern of what's happening. And then if I just rewrite that as one single power, this is actually n to the three over four.
And according to the P series test, um, here P actually equals three over four because that's the exponent of N, right? Now here's the word part, right? Since P is less than one, the series converges. On that chart, it tells me that if P is less than one, it converges. If P is greater than one, it diverges. Okay. And instead of writing since this, I could have just wrote this implies that, but it's the same thing. Okay. P being less than one is the reason why the series converges. I think I still have no, that's it. That's pretty much all there is. So <laughs> if they ask you to do the integral test, make sure that you're defining what F is, and then you go at it. And then once you get the actual value of the integral, like you're done, if it's a finite number, then you say the integral converges, so therefore the series converges. If this is undefined or infinity or negative infinity, then it diverges, which would mean your integral diverges, therefore your series diverges. Okay. So only if you get a finite number does it converge. And then the P series is always nice. Normally, if they give it to you like this, you just have to rewrite it. And then once you know what that exponent is, it tells you right away whether or not it converges or diverges. P series is like the best one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the easiest one. That one and the divergence there, right? So like looking at that, if you were to take the limit of this as m goes to infinity, the bottom goes to infinity, which means the fraction goes to zero, right? So this one obviously does not, it's not going to be outruled as divergent from the top because we get zero. So we don't know. We have to do another test. And they apparently wanted us to do an integral test. Same thing here. If I, once I got it like this, if I take the limit of that as m goes to infinity, my bottom's going to go to infinity, which means the whole fraction is going to go to zero. So again, it's inconclusive. It's not automatically divergent, but I need another test to tell me that it converges, okay? Or another test to tell me that it diverges. Okay, now my not so favorite problem. <laughs> I do really do not like this section. And I apologize if I struggle with it too, because I just literally do not like it. And I'm the kind of person like, it's block it out of my brain. I don't like it. <laughs> so, um, gonna try <laughs> now I did put like a little hint in there um normally if you have algebraic expressions like into powers and things like that um normally that's what you're gonna use the comparison test for or if you have exponentials the same thing you'll use your comparison test those are the best ones to use them on what makes these two series like complicated and why you wouldn't do well, for both of them, you can do another test, but anyway. Um, and once we get to that test, that's the one I'm going to use all the time. <laughs> it's like a lot of the chapters are like that. Like they show you one way, and then they, you struggle with that way. And then later at the end of the chapter, they show you another way, and they're like, oh, look, it's easier this way. So I feel like that that's what's happening with this comparison and stuff. So we're going to do it the way they say. I have to check the box that I covered it. <laughs> so we have to cover it. Um, but I can tell you right now that on the test, there is not a single problem that tells you you must use the, di the direct comparison or the limit comparison, okay? If, if you like it and you want to do it, that's totally okay. Go for it. I will know how to read your paper no matter which test you apply, okay? And some of, some of them, you can apply multiple different tests, okay? You don't have to just apply one test versus another. Um, many of them could apply to the same series. And everybody's going to probably choose differently, which is going to make the solutions fun for me because I'm probably going to have to do it <laughs> all the different ways so that if somebody chose this test or that test, they can see what it should have looked like correctly, right? <laughs> so it'll be interesting. But with this one, you definitely just kind of ignore the constant. I mean, I can't ignore the one on the top because that would be a problem, right? It's there. There's nothing else there. But that nine is what's causing this to not fit a P-series test. 
So if that nine was not there, I could factor out a one third to the front of the series. And I'd just have one over into the seven, right? And then I would know seven is bigger than one. So this thing's supposed to diverge, okay? But with that nine in there, I can't apply the P series because it's just one term and that's it in my denominator. So I can't do that for this problem, but that's what I want to do, right? So then what we do is we, we call this one a n, because that's the one that's given to us, okay? And then what we do is we create another test and we just, another series or sequence, and we try to see how we can apply P series to that one. And then maybe it'll tell us something about the one we've got, okay? So for instance, here, I wanna pick a bigger series um, and I'm basically picking the same thing, but without the um, constant. So I just have this without my constant. And then you have to, you have to actually make sure that this one is bigger than that one, okay? Um, and it makes sense because isn't the denominator bigger on this one? No matter what you plug in for n, if you're adding nine to this guy, this denominator is always gonna be bigger, which means the whole fraction is actually smaller, right? So we do know that a n is less than or equal, right? Could be equal. I don't think it is, but it could be. Not even for one, will it be the same? Maybe some weird fraction, they'll be the same. Yeah, I'm weird. I'll just put the bar. Maybe it's equal, maybe it's not. Who knows? <laughs> but we definitely know that it's less than for probably most of the um, ends. Right, for sure. Um, so then we basically have two choices. We can either show that this one converges and then therefore the other one converges, but we don't really care about what that one's doing. We're trying to prove what this one is doing, right? This is the problem that we were given. We wanna know what that guy does. We don't really necessarily need to know what BN is doing. So my focus is not gonna to be to show that this one converges so then, or diverges, so then that one also diverges, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show whether or not what's happening to this big one, okay? Especially since I know that it can apply the um, P-series test, okay? So if I were to look at, this series, one over three to the n power seven. Um, this one's going to factor out the one third so that I just have n over seven, right? And then if that's all I have for the series part, I can identify what p is now and p is seven. But P is greater than one, which implies that the series BN diverges. So it was kind of what we wanted to show, but now we need to say, well, according to this direct comparison test, if that guy diverges, then supposedly the little one diverges. So let's go get my little sheet. Bum, bum, bum. So if B converges, then that one converges, then B diverges, then the A diverges. C mine's bigger though. So I need to show that B converges, but B does not converge. Hmm, this problem is interesting. Why do they want me to use the comparison test? I think the other one's written different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I would have to show that B converges and mine does not converge. So mine's less. But this one's less. So see, we did something wrong here. Let's see, B needs to be smaller than A. So see what I told you, I don't like this. 
<laughs> this is why. This guy is supposed to be smaller than that guy. And then, then if this smaller one convert diverges, then that one will diverge. Okay. So that's the goal. The goal is we want to have a smaller series. And we want to show that that one diverges, which would then tell me that AN diverges. And the only reason why I have a clue that it's going to diverge is just because it looks a lot like the P series test, right? And we know that if that exponent is greater than one, then it's going to diverge. So we need a smaller one. And we actually picked the wrong one because this one was actually bigger than the original, wasn't it? What if we were to let B n equal one over n to the power seven without the three? Let's see, for n equal to one, because that's where it starts, a1 would be one over, what, three plus nine, which is 12. And then b1 would be one, just one. That's not necessarily bigger, is it? Or smaller? Let's yes, keep yes, going. Okay. I'm gonna keep going, and there's a reason, because I can kick out the, so many terms. So if I plug in two, oh God, I don't know what two to the seven power is. And of all days, I forgot the calculator. Normally there's an extra one here, but it's not. 128 times three, and then plus nine. 393, thank you. That would be two, which is the, what was 128 times three? So this to minus five, right? 384. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Two to the power of seven. Yeah. Times three plus nine. So we got that one. Now, is this one smaller or bigger? Well, the denominator is, right? 393. This is about 0 0.002544, blah, blah, blah. And this one is about 384. 0 0.002604, yeah. So it's still bigger. C3. One over three, 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 seven plus nine. Oh, I'm just gonna write the decimal. It's nice to look at the decimals. Point one, two, three, one, five, two, two, zero, seven. And then B3 would be same thing, but without the three and nine. Point zero 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 four five seven two four. It's still bigger, right? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's just going to be bigger. You're probably wondering why I'm still going. Okay, I'm going to explain. When you have this, okay. You have, I'm just going to come up with something random like um, one over n. Okay. You can plug in one. You can plug in two. You can plug in three. And then you can write the leftovers from four on like that. So even if this a guy is bigger for the first few terms, I could just kick those first few terms out and then only analyze this guy. And if that guy diver or converges, right? If this little guy converges, then I know when I add all these numbers, I'm still gonna get a finite sum, which means it also converges, okay? But if this guy diverges, which means it's going to infinity and I add some more terms to it, isn't it also going to diverge as well, the original? Okay, they're the same. So that's why I'm still going because I'm trying to see if at some point A is going to be smaller than B. Okay. 
So hopefully at some point, or I'm sorry, that B is smaller than, than A. Because if I can prove that the smaller one diverges, then we prove that the whole thing diverges. Okay. So I'm still going, apparently I can't take out just three terms, <laughs> but see if there's any pattern here. So I'm gonna do four stores X, one over three X to the power of seven. Get out of there, plus nine. Point zero 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 two zero three four one. And then one over X to the seventh. And still bigger. Okay, I'm gonna jump to web assign and see what web assign is doing. I don't want to cover that. <laughs> okay. Because maybe I'm not seeing whatever it is they're supposed to be doing. Which is why I hate this. It's just too much to consider. It's like one of those things where you have to already know what's going to happen before you can even try to like answer it. which is weird because I literally just used the password that I put in my phone. <laughs> Okay, we're in 9.4, right? Yeah. Okay. You see, why are you taking on my phone but not in here? Okay. I need to see what they're doing because maybe they're not letting, maybe they're not picking this or this as the end. They're picking something else. And if so, I want to see what they picked and why. Because when I was learning this stuff, they told me just to ignore the constant and then do it and it works out. But this one's not working out. <laughs> and it's telling me I have to use that test, and it's just not working out according to that test. I mean, I know how to use the other tests, and I can probably prove whether what this thing's giving for the other tests, but not for this one. Um, 9.4. Oh. oh. We were right the first time. I think I messed up on the first problem. That's why. So yes, look at what it says under piece series test. So I just totally got these backwards and I break. Notice that for the piece series test, it says if P is greater than one, then it converges. But if P is less than one, then it diverges, right? And I did the exact opposite on both my paper here and the other problem. <laughs> so Help if I got my P series straight. So this was actually less than one, which does not mean that it converges, right? According to that P series test, that means that it actually diverges. So I had the wrong conclusion there. And the rubric to grade this stuff is gonna be weird because I literally tell you in the instructions, you have to tell me what test you're applying. So at the very beginning, you say, I'm applying P-series test, or just P-series. Let me compare it to same. Integral. Whatever test it is you're applying, you tell me what test you're applying. Then you apply it. And then at the bottom, I want the conclusion, right? So what, is it, what did the test tell you, okay? 
And sometimes you might be using multiple tests. It just depends on how weird the problems are. And they do get weird eventually. Uh, not that these are not weird, but whatever. They get weird. <laughs> so then here, we were good. We just made the wrong conclusion over here. So we were good in what we had said B to be. We were good in saying that the B would be bigger than the A, right? And we were good for examining what, what B was doing, okay? But we were wrong when we were, or I was, when I made that conclusion that because P is greater than zero, it diverged. And then that wouldn't help me. That let me, un, you know, I couldn't figure it out because it didn't match what the test was trying to tell me. When you apply the direct comparison test, you have to show that the big one converges so that you know that the little one also converges. It has to, right? If it converges, it means that when you add up all those terms, you get an actual finite number. And if this guy is smaller than that, it should also be a finite number, just smaller, right? So this actually means that Bn is going to converge. P test told me that that will converge. And you guys haven't had enough experience with P test yet to have copy <laughs> in the greater than one, less than one situation. But now I'm going to go back to my chart just so you can see the conclusion. Okay. So it says here in the comparison if the B is bigger and the B converges, then that means that the A series would also converge. Okay. So on my paper, I've already said that that guy converges. Well, according to the limit comparison test, that also means that the original one converges. And this is the one I was asked about, right? So that's the one I want to know what it does. And I have seen this situation, so I'm kind of glad that we were on, you know, doing it wrong or whatever, because it did let me attack, um, attack this notion here, where you have to remember that these are series, right? So it's a bunch of stuff added together, and you can break them apart by taking out some of the terms and then just looking at what you have left over. Okay. You can do that, and there may be a case in the future where we have to. Geometric series test real quick. Okay, and yep, here it is exactly what I knew was going to happen. Okay, notice in the P series test, where does the P series start? Well, let me click this stupid thing and see if it'll go away. No, don't go away. Anyway, do you see down here at the bottom where N starts? N starts at one when you're applying the geometric series. Okay. So, oh, I guess I get that out of my way. Notice that mine doesn't start at one, right? It starts at zero. So I literally have to do that exact same thing that we just talked about on this problem. I have to kick out that zero. So I'm going to plug in zero, and then I can resume the rest of the series at one. Because I won't be able to apply my comparison test unless it has one. And you can simplify that number. Anything to the power zero is one, right? So the numerator is one. Down here, I have one, but plus three, which is four. Now, showing that this little guy, this one term converges, 
would also mean that the original converges. Because if this converges, then it means that the sum is a finite number. Okay. And if I add one fourth to that finite number, isn't it still a finite number? Right. So if this guy converges, then the whole thing still converges. Similarly, if this diverges, right, it means it's going to infinity or it's undefined. Well, then if I add one fourth to it, it's still going to be infinity or undefined, right? So it would also still diverge. So kicking that one term out isn't really going to change my convergence conclusion. All it would change is the sum. If I were to be asked what's the sum, I would just have to take whatever I get for this plus the one fourth, okay? So we're gonna do this direct comparison test. And again, like the other problem, I'm gonna ignore that plus three. That plus three is the issue. Always the plus the constants, that's the problem, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna let Bn, another guy, equal four to the n over five to the n without the plus three. And we also still have to know who's the bigger one and who's the smaller one. I'm not going to write the sign in there yet because I don't know yet which one's bigger and which one's smaller. Now remember, this is a n. Okay. So if, which fraction between these two is smaller or bigger, whichever one? Which denominator is bigger? A's denominator is bigger. And if A's denominator is bigger, it makes the whole fraction smaller, right? So AN is actually smaller, okay? And since I can't tell you if this guy diverges or converges, probably need to figure out what B is doing. And hopefully it converges, right? But if the big one converges, then the little one also converges. That's what the direct comparison test tells me. So let's go examine the series with Bn. Now, one thing I'm going to do before I keep going is rewrite this as 4 over 5 raised to the power n. Right? We have an exponent property that says if you have a fraction raised to a power, you can raise the power to each numerator, denominator, individually. Right? So it's like I'm basically going backwards from that property. And then now this looks like a geometric series, doesn't it? So the A. And the R need to be identified when it's a geometric series. What is the A for this geometric? One, it's invisible, right, in the front. So it's a one. And the R is for this. Now, R is less than one, which implies it converges. It's not asking me to find X, so I don't need to use that formula A over one minus R. Because it does not ever ask me what the sum is. It just wants to know if it converges or not. Okay. Now, this converging, the geometric series converging, implies that Bn converges. And according to that um, direct comparison test, if the big one is converging, then that also means that the littler one, which is our original, converges. And that's what we were trying to show, right? We were trying to show our original series converges, which also implies that this thing converges because is a n um, itself equivalent to the original? A n itself is just this part, right? Not with the one fourth. But I want to say what happens even with the one fourth. Well, it all converges. Okay. Ten, five. 
By the way, if I have not gotten to see what has been the department so far, so it's been so mm -hmm. natural. I worked really hard on building that, so <laughs> <laughs> check it out. <laughs> And we have more. I don't like these, but it's okay. <laughs> so I chose the same exact problem. So notice example three is the exact same series as example one. Okay. And I did it on purpose since we already know the answer to number two. We should get that same answer, right, for the second one. Um, and it was literally the same in the web assigned. They just had, instead of four and five, they had different numbers, right? Uh, but it's the same kind of application, so I figured why not use the same the same series and see what happens. Um, so this one wants me to do the limit comparison test. Now I'm gonna go check in the limit comparison test if that n starting at zero is gonna be a problem. Okay, so let me go to my sheet and check out the limits comparison test. So see, it does not have bounds, right? None of these have bounds, so they don't care. When you're doing just the comparison test, what it starts at. Okay. So I don't need to kick out that one forward like we did the last time. But I do need to figure out a BN and then I need to take this limit. Okay. And it has to be the original AN over the new one that you created. Okay. So over here, we're going to use the same BN, right? Ignore the constant. So it's going to be 4N over five in. And when it comes to these comparison tests, I honestly would rather do the limit comparison test versus the direct comparison test. And the reason why is because with the limit comparison test, you don't have to care who's bigger or who's smaller. You just come up with something to compare it to and then you go for it, okay? It doesn't matter who's bigger or who's smaller. And that's the whole confusion with the direct comparison test. So who's bigger, who's smaller, which one am I trying to show doing what, right? That's the hard part about that test. So for the limit comparison test, we're gonna do as n goes to infinity, and I'm just gonna write a n over b in first, and then I'll actually put it in there. So I'm gonna get a big fraction, and the numerator is gonna be the original. And then the denominator is going to be the one that we that we created, right? Now I'm actually going to rewrite this. Um, so I'm going to instead of dividing by this bottom, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal, so it becomes this. It will not be one over three is the answer. So these reduce, it's actually one, the answer. But I have this now, right? And here's this weird little trick. In the computer, in the video, I did Bobital's rule, which is not my favorite. What I could also do is just divide all the terms by five in. This was the way they taught you how to do it back in Cal 1 before they taught you L'Hopital's rule. <laughs> so it's actually faster for me than to apply L'Hopital's rule. So then five in over five in is just one, five in over five in is just one. But then over here, you still have this, right? So what's happening as n goes to infinity? Mm -hmm. That whole fraction down there will go to zero, right? Because five to an infinite power is infinity and three over infinity will go to zero. So then you do just end up with one. Now I'm gonna go check the test again, just a second, because there's one of the tests that when you get one, it's exclusive and I just wanna make sure it's not this one. I do remember that vaguely from this chapter. So I did this and it says, as long as you get a number, finite number greater than zero, then they both converge or they both diverge. Okay, great. So I think it's, 
Which one is it? There's one of them where if you get one, it's inconclusive. Yeah, here it is. If you get one, it's inconclusive for the ratio test. And if you get one, it's inconclusive for the root test. So I just wanted to make sure that wasn't the case for <laughs> the limit comparison test. Let me go back. So then what does this tell us? Getting one, positive one, tells us that both this guy and this guy either converge or both diverge. I'm not going to say both again. That's the top. And so then you have to prove if one of those converges or diverges. And the one that's easier to look at is the end, right? So we know that this equals this thing. I'm just going to write it as that fraction, right? Which is a geometric series. which converges around the space. Since R equals four fifths, which is less than one, okay? And then this guy converges, which implies the original guy converges. And it's good to keep going back to that sheet because once you do some math, you have to go back and tell and figure out what did that math tell you, right? And then what does that eventually tell you? So I always go back to that sheet. Like, here's all my stuff. What does it mean? I have to go back. Okay, last, last problem. Again, it's limit comparison test, which is a little bit nicer than the direct ones but I didn't write a series in here. So I think I just had it on my phone. <laughs> Let me go figure out which series it was. Here, this one, it you know, I No. <laughs> no, oh yeah, this one, this one's good. <laughs> okay. So the series I was supposed to have in there was n to the power six and n plus five. So we talked about how those constants are the problem, right? They're the reason why things are not nice and you can't just apply some test directly to this guy, okay? <laughs> there is some test that you can apply. My favorite one is the ratio test. It's just my favorite. Um, I can take limits all day long. So I'd rather just put one guy on top of another guy and then take the limit. <laughs> so once they get to that ratio test, you'll you'll notice that I'll use it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's just my favorite. Okay. Um, and then when we get to the further chat sections in chapter nine, where we actually use all this information, so you get to the point where like, okay, converges or diverges, but then what is what do I do with stuff like this? Okay. Um, and that's what we'll do in the last two sections. And you definitely need to use ratio test. Um, so I'm going to take away the plus five and see what we have. So BN, this is AN. BN would be one over N to the power six times N, which is actually one over N to the power seven. And so then if we're applying the limit comparison test, we're gonna put the original AN, which I'm not gonna fit in there, so I'm just gonna write this for a second. My big fraction, and then my AN goes on top. 
my BN goes at the bottom. And then I'm going to rewrite it. And sometimes you don't have to do this step. You could just go straight from this one that I'm about to write. You do not have to write these two guys. Mm -hmm. You can just multiply by the because that's what's going to happen anyway. <laughs> it's the same with the ratio test. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal anyway. So then I'm going to distribute that into the power six. So in the numerator, I just get into the seven. In the denominator, I'm going to get into the seven plus five into the six. And then just like before, I'm going to use the old cow one technique before L'Hopital's rule. Otherwise, I have to apply L'Hopital's rule seven times, right? I have to keep doing it until this is a constant, okay? So it's going to take forever. <laughs> so I'd rather just divide by the highest power at the bottom. Yeah, it takes forever. <laughs> So then the numerator becomes a one, the denominator has one plus, and then six of the ends will cancel, but I'll still have five over one extra n. I don't know why my end did not look right here. So then as n goes to infinity, this little fraction here, five over n will go to zero. And so you basically end up with one over one plus zero, which is just one. And remember, we're applying the limit comparison test. So that tells me both the series A n and the series B n, either both, or I already wrote the word both, either converge or diverge. So in order for me to tell you what AN is doing, I'm probably going to have to go analyze BN. And BN was 1 over N to the power 7, right? This is nice because it's a P series, right? P is equal to 7, which is greater than 1, which implies um, that BN converges which according to the limit comparison test tells us that A n converges. And that's the one we were wanting to know about was A n. A n is the original. So I'm gonna, let me see. Give me this back for just a second. I want to show you what they look like and the homework. Oh, let me tell you how the answers. Let me see. I think I can really not do that. Let's get rid of the key, get rid of that. Okay. So they give you a problem like this, which we've done, and then they ask you which one to compare it to, right? Because the direct comparison, you have to compare it to something. And then you also have to tell them which one's bigger or smaller. Okay. Then you make your conclusion whether the original converges or diverges. The same thing for this one. You tell them what you're going to compare it to. You tell them which one's bigger and which one's smaller. And then what the test tells you. Um, this was also a direct comparison test. So is that one. Um, then you get into the limit comparison test. And they just want to know what BN is down here. And then depending on what you get for L, it'll either converge or diverge, okay? Um, same thing for this one, you'll put whatever you figure out for BN, or well, it's like my exact same problem. <laughs> so then whatever it tells you, you'll either converge or diverge. Come on, stop it. Um, now this one is different and we're, we didn't do it, but it just basically says, here's the series you have. Tell me whether it converges or diverges. And then identify which test you use. Now, so far, there are three tests that you could use to do this. 
even though this is in section 9.4, you could have applied the integral test to this. So it totally would have worked. Okay. You could apply the direct comparison test, or you could apply the integral test. All three of those tests would have applied to this single series. Okay. And all three of them would have given you the same conclusion that it converges. Okay. Um, but it says here, make sure you select which test you apply. Um, not an inter term test because it doesn't diverge, it converges. So it definitely wasn't this one. It does not look like a geometric series, so it wouldn't be that one. It doesn't look like a P-series test because there's a plus or a minus 64 in there, okay? Um, and we haven't done the telescopy. Another word for it is the alternating sign, it's alternate, alternating series test. So basically if you have like a negative one and then it changes the sign, that's that word. Telescoping or soliding, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> um, so any of these three answers would be correct. And it doesn't matter which one you select, it, they'll all be correct. But it only asks you to pick one, okay? So whichever one you apply, you just tell it which one, okay? And that's pretty much, pretty much it. <laughs> So these two sections are, are a little bit on the smaller side, 9.3, 9.4. They're not my favorite. So even though I'm showing you how to do it, it's just not what I will use once we get to the later problems, okay? Um, and it mostly has to do with all of this. It's too much. It, you know, you have to know which one's bigger, which one's smaller. After everything is said and done, even if you do the limit comparison test, you still got to go back to the other one to figure out what the other one's doing. So it's just too much round and around and around. I don't like it, <laughs> but that's just me. You like it and you're you're fine with it. You don't get mixed up like I do and go for it. <laughs> but we will learn another one, okay? Um, but that's it. Do I have any questions about these two before you go ahead? Don't know. I I was recording. Yes, I was. Okay, well, then that will be the end of class today. If you have time, you can still work on WebAssign. Um, but if you need to go or you just want to be off camera while you do that, go for it. <laughs> um, but you guys have a good day, and we will cover on next week. We'll start with 9.5 and 9.6. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Which one? Okay. Oh, yeah. Which one are they? Five. Very good. I don't know why my brain is not yet. So let me see. Where's my website go? 9.1. Back. 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 9.1 Yeah, we did number one of those in class. What is your numbers? Um, five and minus one at the top, five and plus one at the bottom. So we talked about how what the factorial means, right? So if you have seven factorial, it means seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. The seven factorial can be written in like a multiple different ways. I don't know how much you get, so I'm just write this. <laughs> I could keep the seven there, and then instead of this, I could write six factorial. I could keep the seven and the five there and instead of writing or seven and the six there. And instead of writing this, I could write five factorial. I could keep doing that pattern, right? And then the rest would be four factorial. So you can keep writing this and separate. You're basically just kicking some of the factors out until you have what's left over, right? Now the point of doing this is so that if I had a problem that said something like this, I could simplify that because I could kick out the seven, I could kick out the six, I could kick out the five, and then the remaining would be four factorial. 
And since you have four factorial of the denominator, both will cancel. Okay. And it doesn't matter if it's the other way around, it's just that you would have this at the bottom, right? So you essentially have to decide which of these, the numerator or the bottom, is bigger, right? So this one's adding one to this number, this one's subtracting one from that number, the bottom's probably bigger, right? So you keep kicking out terms until the bottom matches the top. So I'm going to leave this one alone. And if I kick out the five in the starting point, right, in plus one, the next term would be five in. Right, if I take away one, it's five in. But that doesn't match what's at the top. So if I take away one again, I would get five in minus one. And that does match what I have at the top. So I'll put the factorial on that guy. I'm not going to keep writing all of them until I get down to one, right? And then this guy and this guy cancel. And you basically end up with five in plus one times five in. And you could even distribute your five in. So 25 in squared plus five in. I don't know why I was not getting that. Oh, it just did not. I don't Like, I'm pretty sure she would have that though. Is that the only one? Um, there's number four on that too. I just was not getting instructions. Number four. And then you go back in a little bit of this time. <laughs> Okay, there we go. I'm going to get these all at night. This is, I'm not sure what I did get. Yeah, I it is foggy after that. Yeah, I'm like that too. If I try to do stuff too late, start getting foggy. Okay, I see the problem. What is your numbers? I have 12 over in. So this one says find the sum. This one's a 12 or this one is n minus 12. I can't read that. Oh, um, <laughs> the bottom is n minus 12? Okay. That could be the issue too, is I can't read my own. No, I think it's plus two. You're right. Uh, the reason why is because on my screen, it's not red. So it should be because the plot, you wrote it like this instead of the yeah. that. That's why your hand probably scoot over to the That's all. <laughs> okay, so we need to get this guy into its partial fraction form. And hopefully either A or B is negative so that the can't the terms start to cancel, right? So let's see. You're right, it is plus two minus or plus over everything. Oh gosh. <laughs> No wonder it wasn't, so it wasn't working. <laughs> I was like, why is this working? Uh -huh. C oh. N plus two A plus B N. Yeah. So then A is six. And then if I plug it back in here, B is six. Yep, that's what we needed. And then so should start canceling. I think this is the weird one where it's like every other term. So n equal to one. I think they do the s in they do the limit of s in. So I'll tell you here. The goal is to do the limit as n goes to infinity of s in. And then you basically want to see if it's finite or infinite. Infinite. Um, so if it's finite, then it converges, but if it's infinite, then it diverges. Okay. So that's essentially the goal to like prove whether or not it converges or diverges. But in order for me to do that, I need to know what SN looks like. So it means you only add up the terms from one to n. Okay. And n being like an arbitrary number, we don't know what it is. Okay. So we're going to put n equal to one. For a few terms. So if I can list a few terms and I can kind of identify what's canceling and what's not, that's all I need. Okay. So for n equal to one, I'm not going to write that. I'm just going to write one. 
for n equal to one, I would get six over one minus six over three. And then for two, I would get six over two minus six over four. For three, I would get six over three minus six over five. Um, I mean, you can fill as many as you want. I usually don't fill class for your four. And then the dot, dot, dot. And then I go backwards. So I'm eventually want to stop at n, but I'm probably going to do n minus one, n minus two, maybe even n minus three. Okay. So this is what's going to be weird because I'm replacing n with this. So it's really strange to say. But this will be six over n minus three, and then six over n minus three plus two is n minus one. Then six over n minus two, and n minus two plus two is just n. Oh, I'm sorry. And we're mad. Okay, so now I'm going to replace that guy with n minus one. And then n minus one plus two is n plus one. And then finally, I could just plug in n. So that stays the same. And so we want to see which ones cancel. So I see that the three is going to cancel with that one, right? This one's negative, that one's positive. Um, I don't see that two is going to go anywhere, but four happens here, right? And when I let n equal five, I'm going to have six over five. So that one's going to cancel. When n is six, I'm going to get six over six. So that one's going to cancel, okay? Um, even this one, somewhere down the line, back over there, probably um, when n minus five, because when I plug n minus five in here, I'm going to get n minus three. So that guy's going to cancel. When I do, oh, this one cancels over here, negative, positive. And positive, negative. And will that one cancel? I think it will. Because if I have n minus four, if I were to do n minus four, that second time, n minus four plus two would be n minus two. So that one would cancel with one that was over there before it. So what do we have left over? We have that Sn is six plus six over two or three. And then we have this guy and we have this guy. And if I take the limit as it goes to infinity of Sn, I have this, but well, that goes to zero, that goes to zero, I just get nine. And since it's finite, that means that the series converges. It was. <laughs> <laughs> but we did do one like this in class. And there's one in the video too, but. Yeah, because there's no way you can write all of them, like all of them. You just have to like think, well, back there, if I did it, it this one would cancel. And back there, if I did it, that one would cancel. <laughs> so, okay. so are we supposed to do like six on both sides? That'll always get us right. You'll there. still have whatever's at the beginning and whatever. That will still have to go back, no matter how many you do. <laughs> Okay. So you just got to basically pay attention, like how many terms over. So like one, one, and then they start canceling. So it probably means on the back end, you're going to have two as well. And then the rest. So if you start noticing that this one's canceling right away, then you only have one that did cancel, which means at the end, you're probably only going to have one that doesn't cancel. Okay. So that's kind of like the pattern. So Jake's work. Yeah. So however many positives you end up with, that's how many negatives at the back end you're going to end up with. Solve it and then help you together. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't know where I got 12 from, but I just. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>